welcome to the Late Night Gamer and tonight we are going to play Field Commander Rommel from DVG or Dawn Version Games. This is a purely solitaire game uh, with different campaigns where you act as Field Commander Rommel. Okay, so let's open up the box and, uh, and see what's inside. We are going to play France 1940 Ghost Division. This game also comes in a deluxe edition, which I don't have, but um, it apparently has mounted maps and thicker counters. But I could, but I was able to pick this up for a quite reasonable price, and I thought, why not give it a shot? With this, I would say, welcome to France 1940. The Germans are pushing on through Belgium and into France. They're, the Allied are rallying and trying to hold on their positions. In this game we are Advin Rommel. We are going to lead the German invasion into France against the game, the board which, are, which is playing the Allied. With that in mind I think we should just get started. Let's just take a closer look at the map, on the map and everything you need to understand for playing the game is printed on the map so it's really neat in that sense once you have learned the rules the basic rules you do not need to refer to the rule book at all you can just play it directly on the map so just let's have a look at the setup right for setup first you get uh, a little bit uh, a little idea about the scale in this it says that the counters here equal the regiments so it also says which forces are the axes start starting with well in this case they are starting with the 25th Panzer they are starting with the 6th Schutzen, which is an infantry, the 7th Schutzen, and the 78th Artillery. And they should all start in Liege. Okay, so Liege is over here. And this flag indicates that this is a German control point. So if there are no forces in this region, the Germans will control it. These arrows indicates a supply point. Let's put the excise starting units in Liege. The Panzer, the 25th Panzer, the 6th and 7th Schutzen, and the 78th Artillery all in Liege with their full strength side up. The Allied starting forces are, they have Chasseurs in Brussels, and Brussels is over here. Chasseur in Brussel, the French, the French have the third in Reim, third in Reim, they have the fourth and fifth Dim in Dinant, Dinant perhaps, this is the fifth D-I-M, which I have no idea what it means, but it's in Dinant. So there are also some British for forces, uh, it's the first Tyneside. the 10th Durham and the 11th Durham and they will start in Cambrai in addition there are two armor division British it's the 7th RTR and the 4th RTR and they will start in Arras Arras is here with the French flag and Cambrai is here with the, with the other French flag You also need to put the campaign turn tracker on the campaign turn start spot. So after the setup of these for starting forces, we look at the next column and that indicates the number of supplies that the Axis, Axis and the Allied will, will have at the start of the game. So the supplies are important for many things, refitting units, taking them from a reduced side to full strength side and also for movement and keeping a lot of units in the same spot. For all of these things you will use supplies. So you need to manage the supply very carefully or else you will get nowhere. So the excess will have three supplies and the Allied will start with four supplies. So what happens during the game is that the Allied will try to build up 
forces in their operation box down here and when and, and each round you will draw some allied operation counters and they will indicate what happened with the operation forces so a plus one force will increase the force with one plus two will increase it with two one advance will tell the forces that once they are deployed they will advance one region or one space towards the closest excess troop or, or unit and once you draw the go chit then you will deploy all the operation forces so now we need to take all the operations counters and we just put them in a cup so the setup instruction says that we need to draw one force and put them in the allied operations box but before we we assign our unit to the allied operation we need to go back and look at the reinforcement the axis has just three units they have the 15th Panzer, the 31st Panzer, and they also have this unit which is the SS Totenkopf. I realize that some people may find it a bit disturbing playing the Axis forces, particularly when you have units as infamous as the SS Totenkopf, which were responsible for a lot of war crimes. But um, my feelings about that is that this is a game that replays events of the Second World War and it's very educational. It can bring new audiences and, and particularly for the younger generation they can become more interested in the World War II theme and will be inspired to, to learn about it. So in that sense it's good. It's a way of remembering the actions without necessarily embracing the actions that actually happened. Luckily this battle is fought with dice instead of bullets. With that in mind we will continue setting up the game. So these are the allied reinforcements and we will randomly draw one of them to assign to the allied operation. So I just shake it and I pick one. This one. It's the 50th. Infantry goes in the Allied Operations box, like that. The rest of the Allied reinforcements are just put on the side here, top of the map. So then the map also suggests the different campaign options, but we are not going to play with, with these options. You can put them into Enhancer game, and it says the victory conditions. The campaign ends, and you score victory points when you hold all three allied objectives. The, um, the goal of the game for the German invading forces are to capture the three key points for the allied Arras, Cambrai and Sherbro and they have to do that before the campaign turn tracker has advanced into the final spot and needs to advance again. Well, we need to check the battle plans also. Battle plans are basic instructions that your units will receive or the enemy units will receive during combat and this box tells you which battle plans you will be using for different different campaigns or different missions you put the allied battle plans in a cup so that we can randomly draw from them during battle you also need to sort out your own battle plans so when you have sorted out the battle plans you will be using, uh, you don't put these in a cup because you will look at them openly and you can buy these battle plans during battle. The small number in parentheses here is actually the cost to buy these battle plans. So cohesion here costs 1 while uh, we can see assault here costs 4. So I just like to put the battle plans uh, face up somewhere I can have easy access to them and read them. So in the right hand corner of the map there is a box telling you the sequence of play. So first it's the axis turn and we will advance the turn counter, we will do refit battle moves, resolve battles and so forth. And then it's the allies turn and they will do what the sequence of play describes for them. And lastly there is a sequence or a battle sequence. 
So the unit counters have a full strength side and a reduced side. And during the refit phase you can pay two supplies per unit to move them up to full strength. We probably should also mention that the numbers here are from left to right attack values, defensive values and maximum movement. So on a d6 you need to roll that number or lower to be successful. This unit, particular unit, will score a hit on a 1 to 2 roll in attack if they are attacking and also coincidentally they have the same numbers when defending and they can move up to 2 spaces on the map. This Panzer unit will hit on a roll of 5 or lower but the superscript number 2 indicates that if that if you roll a 1 or 2 you will actually score one additional hit because of the strength of this unit so then you will score 2 hits. The defensive value is 3 and the maximum movement is 3. However even though the movement may be 3 you can only move one space without paying supplies. For the other movement you will need to pay one supply per space. So if this Panzer were to move from Liege into Dinant and further into Reims it could do that providing there were no enemy units there. This one would be for free and for into Reims they will have to pay one supply. That takes care of setup for Field Commander Rommel. And we are ready to start playing this game now.